Economic Injury Disaster Loan, also known as EIDL. And this is going to be an information session. Um, I will be your facilitator today. Um, and then I also have a special guest consultant. Um, she's a tax and accounting professional, wealth of knowledge, um, that will be able to, who will be able to share additional information. So how we're going to go over uh, our information session today, we're going to just briefly discuss the CARES Act um, and give a, a little summary about what that is, because the funding that we're going to talk about actually came from, from that. Uh, we will also talk about um, EIDL, just a, a little bit of information about each kind of a brief overview. Also, the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP. Um, we're going to discuss the utilization of funds, how you can utilize them, and why you should utilize them a certain way. And then Rue's going to cover tips for proper accounting, the importance of record keeping, and then preparing for a next round of stimulus funds. So the CARES Act, or the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, it was passed by Congress March 27th. So it was over two trillion in economic relief packages um, that were delivered, you know, via the Trump administration's commitment to protect the American people from COVID. The CARES Act actually provides fast and direct economic assistance for American workers, family, small businesses to preserve jobs for American industries. So there is a lot encompassed in the CARES Act. However, today we're going to cover some of the items that are specific to small business owners. So the top four concerns for small business owners are the, are the top um, takeaways for small business owners. So under the CARES Act, the creation of the Paycheck Protection Program happened. Um, there are also emergency grants for businesses applying for disaster relief. So EIDL is, is an upfront grant and also a loan. There is increased funding for business and educational programs. So there are opportunities, especially here at the Women's Business Center, where we can make sure that we get additional information and, and offer you that one-on-one -on -one counseling that Sophia was mentioning. There's also, if necessary, relaxed criteria for filing Chapter 11 bankruptcy, though we would hope we can equip and empower you, um, you know, to stay in business, even if it means pivoting your business or expanding your services and products that you, you offer. So the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, this program is available to small businesses or it was available to small businesses with fewer than 500 employees who fall within the SBA standard guidelines restaurant, hotel, or business industries that fall within this NAICS code, so um, the North American Industry Classification System, they were allowed some different considerations, but um, in theory, it's for all small businesses with um, locations with 500 or fewer employees. Tribal businesses were eligible, nonprofit uh, businesses were eligible as well. So a 501c3, or I'm sorry, a 501c19, veterans organizations um, are eligible, and then 501c3 nonprofits are available. Understand that nonprofits have different classifications, and so there are C6s and others that were actually not um, included in this round for this particular benefit. Independently owned franchises with less than 500 employees are considered eligible or were considered eligible. Also, if you are a sole proprietor, an independent contractor, a gig economy worker, or self-employed, you were actually eligible for this Paycheck Protection Program as well. There was another program called the uh, Federal Pandemic Unemployment Compensation Program. And so that was kind of that gray area where you could actually apply and be approved for both or you know, the pandemic unemployment and the PPP, but the programs and dates that you received the benefit could not overlap. Loan expenses related to payroll up to $100,000 per employee, mortgage, interest, rent, and utilities um, could be entirely forgiven if you were approved and funded um, with that PPP or that Paycheck Protection Program. How much? will be forgiven will be dependent on whether you keep all of your employees during that covered period of the loan 
and the way that you document. And I cannot wait for Ruth to share that information about documentation, but that is going to be extremely important. So the PPP program actually had a first go round in March and then it, there, it was restarted on April 24th, 2020. So there was actually a second round of funding because we know that small businesses really, really needed that benefit. And so the initial um, disbursement of loans went really, really fast. So they were eligible, uh, PPP loans were for $10 million or 2.5 times whatever your monthly payroll was including again if you had employees yourself or if you were self-employed or you know a subcontractor or an independent contractor or a sole proprietor 100 percent of that pp loan if you were approved and funded can be forgiven assuming you follow certain guidelines so initially it was an eight-week period where 75 percent of the funds had to be utilized for payroll specific, and then 25% could go on other eligible expenses. When the Flexibility Act was passed, however, that time frame was then could be extended to 24 weeks of utilization, where 60% of that had to go directly toward payroll, and then 40% would go towards other authorized expenses. So the Time frame that you utilize will depend a on when you received and got your loan funded um, and when you got that loan funded and dispersed to you that is when either the eight week or the 24 week time frame would start. We would love after today's webinar to share additional information specific to your own individual uh, needs. You can in fact also apply could have applied for both PPP and EIDL loans, meaning you could actually get both of those uh, benefits for your business to help to keep you going. The only thing is, is that approved expenses could not be the exact same expenses at the exact same time. Meaning if you used 75%, let's say, of your PPP loan for your payroll, you wouldn't want to use the EIDL loan for payroll in that same eight week time frame, but it does not mean that you can't use it for approved expenses and payroll. Applications for PPP were processed through any SBA approved 7A lender. Again, that portal has closed. They're no longer accepting applications for that. However, the idle you can actually still apply and be approved for. And that is the upfront grant or the upfront disbursement that is uh, $1,000 per employee, up to $10,000, or again, if you're self-employed, independent contractor, or sole proprietor, it's $1,000 upfront, and then you will get your loan as well. That is the forgivable portion of the idle. The loan that you get that's 30 years is not forgivable. So again, I just want to make sure that we cover the approved uses for PPP funds. So the loan will be fully forgiven if the funds are used for payroll costs, interest on mortgages, rent, and utilities, um, and likely high subscription, but at least 60% of the given forgiven amount must have been used for payroll. So now we'll just briefly discuss the economic injury disaster loan or the EIDL. So this loan provides economic relief to small businesses and nonprofit organizations that are currently experiencing a loss of a revenue temporarily. Applications are in fact still being accepted and there is, like I mentioned, an advanced grant as well as a loan component. If you do need assistance with completing this information, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to point you in the right direction. The other thing is, unlike the PPP, other nonprofit entities are eligible for these idle funds. So if you are a 501c6, where it is a technically a tax write-off, um, when people donate to your organization and things like that, you can actually take advantage of this program. So the idle eligibility was for small business owners and qualified agricultural businesses, 
uh, in all U.S. states and territories that are currently eligible to apply for a low interest loan due to coronavirus. Ag big agriculture businesses with fewer than 500 employees are eligible as a result of a new authority granted by Congress in response to COVID-19 pandemic. So oftentimes for agricultural businesses, people will go specifically through the U uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture for assistance, but the SBA offers opportunities as well. The other thing that I want to make sure that you understand is meeting certain uh, eligibility standards for uh, the idol are great but you also want to make sure that you have documentation that shows you've experienced an economic hardship or an economic injury as a result of covid so anytime um from i want to i believe it was february 15th and rue correct me if i'm wrong um until you know <laughs> i guess until the guidelines change but you do have to prove that there was an actual economic injury in order to be eligible for these programs meaning you know you've had a dip in sales you had to temporarily close maybe you had to hire more employees because you know your product or service there was more need for what it is that you were offering and it could be a range again if you do have questions we'd love to answer those for you to make sure that um you're able to make a sound decision on applying for these programs or utilizing funds from these programs. Please understand that everything that you put on these applications is self-certification. Um, and so you're certifying that all of the information that you're submitting is true. So it's, tip, it's similar to being um, under oath. So everything is under penalty of perjury. And we wanna make sure that you have the best possible information to make the right decision for your business. So there are approved expenses for idle as well that can be used to cover a wide array of working capital and normal operating expenses, such as continuing healthcare benefits for yourself or your employees, rent, utilities, um, fixed debt payments. You may have had to transition to where you are working you know, outside of your, your given office and you've had to expand technology, um, or you've had to increase, you know, let's say your web, um, presence, your, your Wi-Fi, or, you know, any number of things, or you've had to do that for your employees as well. So understand that those funds can be utilized for all of those things. You just want to make sure that um, you're documenting those as well. Um, the other thing that I want to make sure, and I think um, we're going to have Rue take over in just a moment, is if you were approved and funded either of these programs, be it PPP or IDLE, it's really important to have separate business bank accounts so that there is no commingling of funds. And what I mean by that is you might have a normal business expense that all of your uh, in income and expenses goes in and out of, for PPP to make sure that you're able to gain the forgiveness um, and for the idle grant and to make sure that you're using the idle funds on approved things. Um, you wanna make sure funds are not commingled. So you would actually write checks or use you know, a debit card or um, a, a credit card, let's say, from those other accounts to make sure those funds, the use of those funds are as clean as possible. If you do have additional information about that, we would love to help you um, navigate through that as well. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Rue and she's gonna talk about tracking your PPP and idle expenses. All right, Danielle, thank you so much uh, for that information. Uh, I'm super excited to be here and I hope you can hear me well. Um, and just let me know if there's any um, sound problems. So yeah, so what we're doing today is, um, I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Rue Gumonyu, I'm a tax and accounting strategies for small business owners as well. And today I just want to uh, just come in and say congratulations you know, on your business. And also to let you know that PPP loans, EIDL loans, any form of grants that you have for your business right now, um, you should be tracking it like 
you, it, like 100%, right? So as soon as you get your PPP loan, your grant, some of you already got those funds. And if you have applied and still waiting, this is a good chance for you to get ready and prepare for that. And also we're gonna talk about how you can get ready for, um, for the second round of the stimulus funds. So today I just wanna tell you that tracking your business expenses is very, very important. The reason why we are tracking all our expenses, even the money coming in is because most of these funds are going to be forgivable. So let's say if you got $30,000 in PPP loan, if you, if you do it the correct way and go uh, with the guidelines that uh, Danielle told us before, you know, like the 60% with the payroll, 40% with the um, other expenses, it can be 100% forgiven. However, for this to be forgiven, you need to be tracking all your expenses. So record keeping is, is a very good, um, good way to make sure that you're going to get this um, forgiven. So uh, in the next slide, I'm going to be showing you uh, some of the information you need to provide to qualify for PPP loan forgiveness and also some strategies you can utilize right now to effectively track your spending. Uh, yeah, do I have the control? Oh, you do. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, we, we talked about the basics of Paycheck Protection Program. And today I'm just going to go over a little bit that if you receive your PPP loan, I had a question before, uh, how can I um, calculate what I need to pay for myself? to cover payroll. So you might not be paying yourself a W-2 or a paycheck, but if you're just by yourself, let's say you received $10,000, 60% of that is $6,000. That's what you should be paying yourself. And I'm going to tell you a little one trick. We were just talking about that a few minutes ago with Danielle. Uh, the easiest way is to actually um, pay yourself with a check. This is going to allow you to have a paper trail of what you are paying yourself for payroll. So easily get a check, write yourself, okay, this is being paid to real good money for $2,000 or whatever amount, but you have some form of records that you're paying. If you have employees, it's gonna be a little bit easy because maybe you pay them with a W-2 and you have a third party company doing that for you or you're doing your own payroll. So make sure that everything that you're doing is documented, right? So pay stubs, uh, paying yourself with a check. Some people want to transfer their, their funds uh, as a direct deposit. You can do that, uh, but some banks don't record that transaction as a payment. So check account, it's easy. You can order some checks from the bank and it comes to your house within maybe 24 to 48 hours. So document, document, document. Otherwise, if you don't use this 60% towards your payroll, your amount might not be forgiven or it might be reduced. Some of you, if you don't um, track your, your expenses properly, you might have partial forgiveness, which means you might not get the full 100% forgiveness. I don't know about you, but me, I want the 100% forgiveness. <laughs> so um, if also you need to make sure that you don't, um, let's say you reduce your full-time employee headcount. So let's say you have five employees um, and you end up reducing them. 
uh, over the course of the period that you had the money, you might not be able to have the full 100% forgiveness. However, um, you need to document. Sometimes, you know, we don't know how long this pandemic is going to last. They might change the regulations behind this, but in this case, they say borrowers may not reduce a full-time employee head count. So employee head count, this is including people who are full-time equivalent, so it's called an FTE. Uh, they can also include part-time workers. So if you want full 100% forgiveness, you might not reduce your full-time head count. Um, and also borrowers may not dec decrease salaries or wages by more than 25% for any employee making less than 100,000 annually. So if you want the 100% forgiveness, this is the guideline. You might not decrease salaries or wages by more than 25% for any employee. So make sure that uh, if there's any need to reduce your uh, salary, make sure you document that as well. Why did you end up uh, decreasing the salary? These are some of the things you can uh, do to make sure your loan may be forgiven. Next slide. Okay. So we just continuing on here. So uh, for that 60%, you can pay salary, you can pay wages, you can pay commissions or any tips up to $100,000 per employee. With that loan as well with the PPP, you can pay for healthcare, uh, some time off, retirement benefits, uh, if there's any separation or dismissal pay allowances, you can use that 60% as well to do that. Um, so you can also, I had a question, how can, can you also pay taxes? Can you use the 60% to pay some of the taxes like the state or local taxes and compensation? You can. So let's say if you have payroll taxes, you can use some of that 60% to pay for um, local or state taxes and compensation. Um, so if you end up cutting stuff, let's say, you know, business is not going well, you may still receive uh, full loan forgiveness if you hire them back later, right? Uh, so let's say if you end up making a good faith offer to rehire that is declined and you're unable to find a similarly qualified employee, you may also still be eligible for loan forgiveness. So there's some rules and guidelines around rehiring as well. But like what I say, make it sure that you are documenting everything that you're doing. So this is including your hiring paperwork or your rehiring paperwork. Make sure you're documenting it. Because 60% of this loan is a huge amount of this. Uh, let's say you got $100,000, 60% if you don't go around the guidelines or stick to the guidelines, it might not be forgiven and you end up paying that back as a full amount. Okay. So how to receive PPP forgiveness as a grant? So whether you're using the, uh, the form 3508 easy form uh, or the standard loan forgiveness application, you are still required to fill out the basic, the basic information of your business and your PPP loan. So 3508 easy form, this is for businesses that got at least $100,000 or lower in their loan. So we're talking about most sole proprietors or small business owners. Uh, who are maybe just working with, for themselves, uh, you'll be using what's called 3508 easy form. If you're using the standard loan forgiveness application form, it's still a little bit, it has a little bit more information that you have to put. And I would like to say about these forms, you can get this from the sba.gov or you can actually go through your lender. This is actually through your lender uh, to fill out this information on the form. So you need to be documenting uh, and providing your business address, uh, the number of people you employ. So this is very, very important, guys, because this is going to determine if this is going to be fully forgivable. So how many people did you have? How many employees did you have when um, 
the pandemic started when you received the PPP loan and how many employees did you have uh, at the end of the 24 weeks when you're applying for that. So you need to make sure that you have all your numbers correct because at this point, um, a lot of businesses, what's going on is that there's a lot of rehiring and some employees are actually going out or um, not working and they're receiving the pandemic unemployment assistance. So you need to make sure you are documenting that as well. You also need to have your loan number in amount. Uh, this can actually, if you don't remember your loan number, you can actually contact your lender. This is going to help you so that they can actually verify how much you got right. Uh, you also need to get this is where I'm, I, I'm, I spend a lot of time teaching about this, details on how much you spent and what you spent it on. Uh, so details on how much you spent, this is, I'm going to be talking about some of the accounting and bookkeeping uh, things that you can do as a sole proprietor or do as a uh, employer will have you know, employees. So you can go to the next slide. I think it's on the next slide. Uh, okay, no, yet. <laughs> All right, so details on what you spend on. So maybe you can go back. I'm sorry. Okay, so details on how much you spend. So let's say, for example, you get $10,000. Automatically, please know that 60% of that goes to your payroll. We are talking about people who want to have this forgivable, right? So 60% goes to, uh, to payroll. How much did you spend and what did you spend it on? So we're documenting the 60%. Remember we said you can write yourself a check, you can um, give W-2s to your employees, document, document, document. And what you spent it on. So 40% of that loan amount is going to cover your utilities. So we're talking about uh, interest on mortgages or interest on lease. Uh, if you're listing a building, uh, rent, uh, utilities, uh, high subscriptions. Uh, I also had a question one time where I say, okay, I have employees, but now they're working from home. How can I verify or how can I pay for the utilities? This is something that's still a, a little bit of a gray area, but I think um, they're going to end up approving utilities for people working from home if you reimburse your employees, right? However, you still need to document how much are, you, are they using those utilities? How much are they using for, you know, for the phones or the gas or the electricity? So document, document if you can get uh, any bills from them, from your employees saying that we're using this much, please document that. You can also reimburse them. However, you need to have proper bookkeeping system to show all this. How much did you spend and what you spend it on, okay? And like what Danielle said, you can actually have different bank accounts. Bank accounts are so easy to create these days. You can create an online banking account so that your grants that you got for EIDL, your PPP loans, they're all kept separate so that your bookkeeping, um, you know what you're spending on. From a uh, tax standpoint, the reason why we want different uh, bank accounts is that if you're going to be forgiven for this, um, for this $10,000 that you got, the expenses that you're saying that I want them to be forgiven, you're not going to be able to deduct them on your tax return. So make sure you are, you are tracking all the expenses that you want to be forgiven and tracking all the other expenses that you're going to be deducting on your tax return. So just keep that in mind. Slide. So in addition to submitting the loan forgiveness application, you, you're going to um, submit what's called the Schedule A, payroll documentation, so W-2s for your employees. They might ask you for the pay stubs, um, 
pay stubs or also maybe the checks that you're giving to yourself. Uh, right now, the SBA hasn't issued any uh, direct order saying that they're going to look into your uh, records, but just to make sure that you have everything and get ready, just make sure you document everything. Uh, also, bank account statements or third-party payroll service providers um, that, that, that are reporting tax forms um, will be reported for the period covered by the loan. So you need to make sure that you have everything together. Uh, in this case, Anything that you're doing right now with that, with those funds, is going to be reported uh, to IRS. So make sure you have all your documents together, especially if you're paying out payroll. Um, the payroll documentation is very, very important, uh, especially when you're filing the tax filing for payroll or quarterly business and individual employee wage reporting. Make sure you have all those things documented, okay? Uh, so in this case, if you want to verify uh, your number of full-time employees, you should include documentation that verifies that the average number of full-time employees on your payroll employed between February 15, 2019 uh, to June 30, 2019. Uh, you can also provide documentation that the average number of full-time employees on your payroll employed between January 1st, 2020 to February 29, 2020. So this is actually for those people who have full-time employees. Uh, so this is actually going to help you when you're providing payroll information to submit. You might ask, okay, Ru, I don't have any um, employees or I submitted um, documentation for that 60%. What about the 40% of that loan? So remember, we're working from that $10,000. You got 60%, which is $6,000 for your payroll. What about the $4,000? What information am I going to submit? So to verify payments, you may toward eligible non-payroll expenses, you should include the following documentation. So your business mortgage interest payments. This is only for business. This is not talking about your home mortgage interest payments. This is for the business portion. However, if you work from home and you have a business in your home, you can calculate um, depending on the square footage and how much you're using only for the portion of your business, right? So this is for business mortgage interest payments. Uh, you can also submit business rent or lease payments. Uh, you can actually pay uh, business rent or lease payments on that as well. So if you're leasing a building or renting out an office, you can use that 40%, part of that 40% uh, to pay for your business rent or lease payments. Uh, you can also pay uh, business utility payments. So you have to actually show your documents that you paid electricity, you paid gas, uh, or you paid water for your business. And it has to have documentation and business address as, as well. Otherwise, they might come back and say, hey, we can't approve you for um for a full forgivable loan. And like what I said, utility payments, they're still talking about it right now, um, especially for now employees working from home, just make sure that you have documentation. Uh, also just want to add that most businesses right now, especially in the restaurant businesses, um, they might not, be getting a lot of utilities in their actual business area because they closed. So if it's a restaurant, you might be maybe catering to your clients and going to cater food to your clients or maybe driving. Now you have a lot of transportation costs. Right now they're saying they might include that under utility. So just, just be aware of those changes as well. And as you go, through all, you know, during this period, 
document, document, document. Uh, the other way you can track your income and expenses, the easiest way is to use an Excel spreadsheet, right? I think I'm, I'm sure everyone knows how to use an Excel. If not, you know, just a basic Excel spreadsheet. You put your income, the amount that you got from your loan or your grant, you track all your expenses, right? That's easier. Or you track how much you were paying yourself. That way, when it comes to the time when you're recent, when you're submitting your uh, forgivable loan application, you have all your stuff ready. The other way you can track your income and expenses, I mean the loans and the expenses, is through QuickBooks. QuickBooks is very, very easy to use. You can link your bank accounts and it automatically automatically start tracking your expenses, anything going there, and you can actually pull reports within QuickBooks. And just to add there, uh, QuickBooks, when you're, when you're having that subscription, it's a tax deduction, right? So you can deduct that on your taxes. So don't be afraid to, to, to start tracking your expenses. If you have someone who can help you do that, that would be great. Okay. Once you completed your application, you will send it to your lender or loan service. This is not going to go through SBA. You're going to put that through your lender. So make sure you can communicate with your lender. Are you accepting uh, loan forgiveness applications right now or not? They'll be able to tell you that, yes, we are or we don't. But uh, I'm just advising you if you're already received the loan, start looking at the application, the loan forgiveness application, and see what's required. And if there's anything that you can fix right now or start tracking, do that right now. You don't want to wait until it's too late. Okay. Okay. So the PPP tracking method, uh, you know, I, I discussed about that a few minutes ago. So though you won't have to submit it with your application, you will need to hold onto your Schedule A worksheet and any documentation you use to complete the uh, loan forgiveness application. So also it is recommended that you keep your PPP funds in a separate bank account. I cannot stress this enough because you have your PPP funds that you receive and maybe you're receiving income in the same bank account from your business and you're paying payroll and you're paying other expenses that are not related to PPP funds. If you have that all mixed up, it's going to be confusing to you next year when you're doing your taxes because you will not be able to know which one did I use for the PPP loan and which one and I, which expenses can I have that forgiven and which expenses can I have that to deduct on my tax return? So keep it separate. You should also be aware of how much money you have to work with for both payroll costs and non-payroll costs. So the easiest way is to just calculate 60%, put it to the side that's for payroll, 40% uh, that's for non-payroll expenses. So Danielle, back to you. Thank you so much, Rue, for that information. Um, so just to kind of recap what we discussed with you today, we give a brief overview of the CARES Act, um, just a summary of, of what it was and how it applies specifically to small businesses. We discussed briefly economic injury disaster loans or EIDL, uh, how you can utilize those funds for your business and that yes, you are eligible or would have been eligible for both PPP and EIDL based on certain um, requirements. We discussed the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP with um, an emphasis on how you want to make sure that you are spending those funds. Um, I do know that there are two different time frames that were introduced over the course of that program. And so some people had an eight week time frame where there were 75 and 25% of the funds that had to be utilized for certain things. And then some people, if you did it after, I wanna say April 20th, 
um, you had that 24 week expanded time frame. So the time in utilizing those funds or making sure you spend that money is based on the day that you actually get funded. So the day that you actually uh, receive those funds, if you do have any additional questions, we would be uh, you know, happy to go over them again to your specific uh, loan instances. We talked about the utilizations of, of funds overall um, and how it applies. Again, you can't apply right now for PPP that was done through banks. That program has now closed, but EIDL is still available. And so we can walk you through that process to be approved for those additional funds. If your business has experienced an economic injury and you do need assistance, we are absolutely here to help you with that. Rue discussed tips for proper accounting um, and making sure that you actually track what you're spending um, and then the different record keeping requirements. It's really important, again, I, I know we've said it several times, but making sure that there are different accounts for these different funds. So yes, you can have one account for idle funds, you can have another account for PPP funds, and um, you can actually use your bank statements to see where you're spending money in and out. It's kind of one of those easy ways to track what it is that you're doing. However, like Rue was saying, if you're using the same bank account that you know you have your normal accounts receivables and payables through, sometimes we can kind of, especially as business owners, we can kind of swipe those cards, right? Now you did it for gas or you needed to get lunch for your crew or um, any number of things, you want to make sure that it is as clean as possible um, so that the bank isn't confused and doesn't have additional questions, you know, in order to get your forgiveness taken care of and so that you don't have those additional questions. So, Rue, um, in preparing for a next round of stimulus funds, what should people do? Okay, so for the next round of stimulus funds, um, I always advise uh, business owners to keep tracking, you know, start on your QuickBooks, do your Excel spreadsheet, whatever makes you comfortable in making sure that everything is tracked properly so that when they start on the next round of stimulus funds, you are ready to go. Right now, what they're saying is that uh, for the next round, they might uh, allow people who already have uh, who applied for the first round to actually get approved for the second round. However, they're going to be asking for documentation. They're also going to be asking to see how your business has been affected from the first time you received the funds and when they're giving you the second round. Did you have to rehire employees? Do you have to let employees go? Um, show us your profit and loss statement show us your profit and loss statement that's what i saw online that they'll be asking so if you're not keeping your records you won't be able to come up with the profit and loss statement right so make sure you're tracking all that so that when it comes to the second round um you are you have all the records together so uh start right now to document thank you for that so here is the physical address of the California Capital Women's Business Center. We're not able to assist you um, in-house any longer. However, we do offer webinars, phone conferences, um, and different types of consultations as needed based on your schedule. Um, there is our website here so that if you would like to see additional things that we offer, uh, such as procurement or loan products or uh, business advising and or counseling, and even additional trainings that are offered. You can find that on uh, California Capital Women's Business Center, uh, dot org. Sophia, who is the Women's Business Center Director, this is her email here if you do need to reach out to her. If you would like to speak to myself or to Rue, feel free to email me um, at dmarshall at cacapital.org, and we would love to, um, again, answer those questions that are specific to you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open it up to questions. This is just some information. So SBA.gov is going to be the federal response. So if there's additional resources there that you can utilize, you can go to SBA.gov. The state of California actually has their own coronavirus response and some, some uh, federal fund utilization and then some from the state. 
And then the treasurer's office um, has additional information that you can utilize as well. So um, I am going to stop sharing this. I do know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available at a later time. So with that, let's go ahead and open it up for questions. Hey, Danielle. Yes. There's some questions from the Q&A box. Okay. Um, I'm going to read them to you. Okay. Uh, I believe Jill Weston's question was already answered, um, but there is an, oh, actually she posted another question. Um, yes. She says she qualified for $211, uh, $111, grateful, but okay. should she return this amount in the hopes of qualifying for a larger grant from other sources? And I so, believe that was referenced, uh, referencing to PPP. Okay, okay. So thank you for that, Suhi. If you want to, to return those funds, you absolutely have the opportunity to do so. But other grant services don't always delineate if you can only use their services or their funds versus these. These are federal funds, so you might find other corporations who are offering grant sources or there might be you know, city, county, or even state opportunities for you. So um, if you need the funds to continue to move your, you know, work your business, I would say that you keep those funds. Um, again, the decision is ultimately yours. However, you don't want to get into a situation where you return those funds and then maybe you're waiting for an extended period of time for another opportunity or there isn't another opportunity that, that is available for you. So um, if there's any specific um, grant sources that you would like to discuss, I'd be happy to discuss with you offline. But the thing is, don't return that money that could, you know, potentially empower you to continue your business the way that you would need um, in hopes that you would be able to get a larger amount in the future. Okay, and she said, if you have auto bill pay for utilities, it sounds like it is advised to change to, to change the auto pay to the PPP account to ch charge, I believe. Yes, that's a great question and absolutely. So if you had it on auto pay already, um, it would be easy to go through and kind of earmark that on your old banking statements. But moving forward, yes, it'd be great to make sure that you change it to that PP account, PPP account, excuse me, just to make sure that funds are clean. Okay, and there's another question. I got my PPP in April 2020 and still waiting for forgiveness application by Wells Fargo. Should I just keep waiting or people are already filling out? Am I missing something? That is a great question and that's a prime example of how all lenders are very, very different. Wells Fargo has not opened up their PPP forgiveness portal just yet. Weekly, they will actually send when you log on to your online banking in the upper right hand corner, it will tell you um, guidelines for forgiveness, but they have not actually opened up the portal for forgiveness from uh, Wells Fargo. So this would be the perfect time to get all that documentation that Rue was um, discussing with us today so that when that portal does open, um, you will be able to apply as needed. So I think those are all the questions that were uh, typed in the q and I don't okay. know if any of the attendees have any questions uh, to type in the chat box or the Q&A. Okay. I do see one who asks if these meetings will be available for after work. And so um, Su Yi is the Workforce Development uh, Program Director. Am I saying that right, Su Yi? Program Development. Program Development. Program. <laughs> um, so if there are additional um, webinars that we'll put together, she'll definitely make sure to send out that information. We'd be happy to offer the information at, at a later time if, if um, the need is there, absolutely. So just look out for information from Sophia and Suyi moving forward. Yeah, and the webinar, when they are being posted, it's gonna be made available on the entrepreneur education uh, training um, folder. You look on the uh, California Capital website, it's gonna be there and there are other types of training as well. But I'm gonna type the, uh, the web address in the chat box and so feel free to bookmark it. Okay. Thank you for that. 
And then someone asked, is this webinar being recorded? And yes, it is being recorded. Um, in fact, I'm really excited to announce that um, through Suyi and Sophia, they're, they're diligent and, and very, very hard work. These webinar sessions will actually be translated in the future. So yes, they'll be recorded and we, they want to make sure that they're reaching um, as many people who need the services and the information as possible. So that's the link to the Entrepreneur Education Program. And um, I think when we're going to make it available on the website, we'll probably send out a follow-up email to those who attend it so that if you need to rewatch it, uh, you will have access to it. Thank you. Are there any additional questions that anyone has that we can answer for you? Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, James. Thank you. Sophia, is there any additional information that you'd like to share? Um, no additional information. I just want to extend an appreciation to you ladies, um, both Rue and Danielle, for your time and for providing your knowledge and expertise today and, and this morning, and, and to Suyi as well. And she's been in the background, but she's been um, monitoring the questions. So thank you, team. Um, Thank you. Abby has, Thank you. Abby raised his hand, or her hand, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, would you, could he unmute himself, or can we unmute him to ask the question? Sure. Abby? Okay. Hello. Hello. Are you Hi. Can you hear us, Hi. Abby? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, well, my question is, I noticed that for the PPE, my business, I started in November of 2019. So, um, and, and moving forward, I noticed for the PPE, it was mainly only for 2019. Are they going to have something that includes 2020 because it's still impacting our businesses in 2020? And how do we, how are we able to apply for loans for now for the impact that's happening now so those are great questions so for ppp and idle if you were in business um prior to that february 15th um guideline you would be eligible for some of these programs um, for idle, they will look to see what your business history was prior to. Um, so for like your 2019 um, tax filings, just to make sure that you did have an actual income realized. Oftentimes as business owners, there's a lot of um, things that are written off. So they just want to make sure that you didn't take a loss because there has to be some type of way to repay those loans. Um, in the event that let's say for PPP, it isn't forgiven or for idle, you know, over that 30 year, um, process. There are additional um, opportunities. So as Rue was mentioning, eventually we'll get some more guidance on um, PPP and other forms of financial programs. Um, but what I can say is that the state of California has additional programs that you are eligible for. Um, city of Sacramento actually had some forgivable loans as well that I know that they're um, going through final processes to um, award those amounts. Um, and also California Capital has um, a micro lending program. Sophia was mentioning some of the programs, but in-house they can actually work with you on funding as well to assist you with providing, you know, that gap funding to, to help keep you moving forward. Okay, is it possible for, um, I, I, I did see that you, you had your um, email up and you, and you guys are not open, um, your doors are not open, but you're still, still making one-on-one -on -one, um, appointments? We are, absolutely. So feel free to, to email and we would be happy to set up that um, session with you and, and figure out what next steps are gonna be best for you moving forward. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do we have any other questions? And if, you're, if your business is located in Paso County, I think um, they just released a new grant program for nonprofit and uh, small businesses. And I think the, it was released um, today or sometime this week and the application is gonna run through September. 
So yes. uh, if you need any information, uh, feel free to email us as well. Definitely. And please understand whenever a county or a city gives that information for additional funding, it's always based on the availability of funds. And so even though the programs might say that they're going to go into September, once those funds are utilized, they're gone. So if you plan to apply for any of those things, you want to make sure that you do them as soon as possible. There was a case where um, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce was offering $5,000 grants, um, and the program in theory was supposed to last for 30 days, but within 24 to 48 hours, all of those grants um, were taken. So if you do uh, decide that you would like to apply for any of those um, funds, just make sure that you do as soon as possible. If you live um, in the Sacramento, the greater Sacramento area, there are quite a few grants that um, we can, I can share with you offline. Also, if you're in the Bay Area, specific to Sil Silicon Valley, there's actually a myriad of resources down there right now because um, so much of what was happening there were these huge co-working spaces that are non-existent at this point. So um, there, there are additional opportunities that I'd be happy to share with you um, offline as well. So I type in the chat box, the link uh, to sign up with the WBC uh, Center. And as you sign up, it, you're going to be required to create an account and enter your information. And once we receive your information, we'll assign a counselor to work with you. Counselors will include Daniel Marshall and, uh, and others on, on staff. Um, the, uh, I think that the link that was added there was for the Entrepreneur Education Program. So oh. I'm going to add the link that I, that you're referring to, which is the, the sign up um, to sign up for the one on one counseling through the WBC. My bad. I, my, my apology. Well, I think the last text is about, oh, yeah, I don't know how I did that. My apology. Oh, no, no worries. No worries. I am oh, adding it like now. So we're good. But at least you have two options. So if you're interested in reviewing the past webinars, um, there are plenty there through the link that Suyi did provide. I know she probably mentioned that before. If you have um, friends or colleagues that are interested in um, business owner, owners topics, um, they are available in different languages as well. Um, and, and Spanish, Hmong, Chinese, um, and I think I might be missing one. Am I missing one, Suyi? Uh, Vietnamese. And Vietnamese. There we go. So those are there are uh, um, different workshops available that were pre-recorded. Um, if you would like to listen to this one again at a later time, just check back on our website within the next, I would say, couple of weeks, and we should have this one there up on our website as well, also available in various languages. If you'd like to either share that information or, like I said, listen to it again. Thank you. That's it from us. Um, any other questions? This is kind of a last call, everybody. We have some time. We can hang out, but I encourage dialogue if, if there are any burning questions. This is the time. We might need oh, to unmute. Awesome. We got <laughs> to raise hand. Um, I'm, wanna... I'm sorry. It's, it's me again. It's heavy. No, no, don't um, I just. Don't apologize. I just wanted to find out, are we able to do group um, meetings? Like if, because I have partners in my um, um, business. So can we do it as a group or does it have to be just me? No, we can absolutely do them as a group. I, I, we do that often actually. So if there's more, more than one person who needs to be a part of that conversation, absolutely we can accommodate you. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, hopefully everybody got um, information, at least snippets <laughs> that you needed for today. Again, if you um, do need additional information, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We would be happy to provide additional resources um, and information for you to help kind of weather this whole pandemic storm. Um, and I guess fires now too. So 
Um, the other thing is that if you are local and um, here in the greater Sacramento, actually no, it's the state of California now, and your business was affected by civil unrest, meaning that it had to shut down because of anything else that was going on, especially right now, um, where there were, you know, National Guardsmen called in or anything else like that, there is additional funding set aside for your business to help make you whole again. So if there was, let's say there was vandalism to your business or you literally had to close because, um, you know, maybe, maybe there, it was a, um, uh, uh, natural disaster or anything like that, there is additional information um, and additional resources for you and your business. All right. Sophia, anything else? Nothing for me, Daniel. All right. Well, thank you, Sophia, Suyi, and Ruth. It's been a great conversation. And thank you everyone who attended and uh, spent your morning with us. We know your time is very valuable and we appreciate that you would share it with us this morning. Have a great rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Great, thank you everyone. Thank you everyone, bye everybody. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>